Inspired by sound. Hello. I've got a strange video for you today. Now, maybe nobody will care about this, but I'm going to do it anyway, because I think it might be interesting for some. Yeah, I'm sitting on the other side of the room today. That means you don't see me on camera. I also sound a bit different because I'm using a lav mic. Because, yeah, I've gone whole hog for this one. And I'm using a lav mic because if I don't use a lav mic, and I just talk to you the way that uh, I would explain in a minute, you won't hear me very well and I'll sound all reverby all the time. Now, I will sound a bit reverby because you can hear the reverb through the recording now, and that is because I'm at my piano. I've got a Knight K10 upright piano in my living room, and I've got it set up in such a way that I can, at the touch of a button, just hit record and start making music. This is good because it means I don't have to mic it up, you know, and, and think about it. I can just come over here, load Logic, load a template, and off I go. But I wanted to discuss how I've done it, my template, my reason for doing the way I've done it, and a bit of this and a bit of that. So this is more sort of a freeform Inspired by Sound video. I'm not talking about libraries today, but I'm talking about setup and process. So I need to, first of all, show you or tell you uh, what happens when I mute my lav mic and only solo the piano mics. Look, I've now soloed the piano mics and you hear me very, very far away. And the only way you'd hear me properly is if I bend down here and talk to you under the piano. So, what have I done and how have I done it? Well, this part's the boring bit. If you want to skip to the playing part, then you can probably do that too. Uh, if I know what I'm doing, I'll have chapterized this video, so I'll do my best. So, how have I done this and why have I done it? Well, I did it because I wanted to be able to play the piano and record myself doing so, so that I can get better, really. Because playing and not recording is fine, but I want to record and hear myself as I play it. And why am I doing this video today? Because I wanted to explain how I got there and to show you the setup and the, basically the stock Logic plugins I'm using for each and every part of this process today. So let's talk about the boring bits first and then I'll show you um, the playing and all that sort of thing. So for the piano, I have um, a few things. I've got a compressor in slot one, and I, I mean sort of effect slots in Logic, not complete control here. No complete control is used in any of this video today. A limiter in two and a reverb in three. Channel EQ is the last part here. And they all have a part to play and I'm gonna bypass each section of this and play for you as well. Now, I'll be bouncing in and out of solo and what have you. Also, um, I have a, a channel that's hidden that you can't see on screen, which I'll unhide a bit later, which is my vocal processing. And on that, I have a ducker so that when I play the piano, um, it doesn't come back through the lav mic. I'll now play and talk at the same time, and you see what happens. Here's me playing. Yeah, you can see that it kind of ducks it down and takes it away. So I've, I've set that up so that the piano basically takes center stage, because I think that's the most important aspect. And if you're wondering why the transport's running on your screens, those of you who can see the transport's running around in a 16-bar loop, I could have made it a one-bar loop, but it's just my default. And so I just enabled cycle. And that's because the ducking on the vocal chain does not work if the transport's not active. So that's why I've done that. All right, so let's talk about what I've got here and all these things. So the first thing is I have the default logic compressor. And believe it or not, I just have a vocal processing preset on here. Because the way that I tend to work is unlike a lot of people, whereby I will look for a preset that serves my purposes and use that to do whatever it is I need to do. In this case, I needed a compressor and I wanted something to sound like it wasn't going to slam down too hard on when I played extra hard. Bad example, of course, because I came in with that forcefully, but you'll get the idea, won't you? And if I bypass this, um, and I'll put this in solo as well so you don't ever hear the um, vocal part, I've come out of solo and I've put the compressor back on. I'll play the same thing.
And as you can hear... Oh, sorry, I better answer that. As you can hear, my keyboard, every time I do anything, is very clearly uh, audible on the mics. And that's because I'm miking my piano in a very, very unconventional way. And I'll talk about that now before I move on. So the way that I've got the piano mic'd is actually with two American-made CAD M179 multi-pattern uh, microphones in Omni, spaced Omni. They're back-to-back, -back, 180 degrees apart from each other, under the piano. The top of the left mic is facing left, and the top of the right mic is facing right. The XLR cables sort of meet in the middle. I've got them on a stereo bar, and under the piano, on this piano at least, unlike some, some pianos have a wooden sort of uh, locking system where the end of the, on each, each side of the piano, the left end or the right end, a little wooden thing uh, locks into place and keeps the panel closed. This is one, my piano is one that closes in the middle with an, I think an iron bar of some sort or some kind of metal. And that keeps the bottom panel of the piano closed. So what I did is I threaded a stereo bar through that and then I mounted microphones hanging upside down like bats from the underneath of the stereo bar. And the metal bar that locks the panel in place for the piano keeps all of that together in place nicely and doesn't move. Now my knees are only a very small amount of centimeters from the microphones. If I move forward even a couple of inches, I know I mixed my um, measurements here, but if I move forward even a little bit on this chair, my knees will knock into the mics and I can tap them here underneath the... There are the mics. And that is because we use this piano as a furniture holder. Um, uh, it's Christmas now in, in the UK, well, nearly. It's December the 20th on the day that I'm recording this video, 2022. And all year round, there's always something on top of the piano. My wife and children like to put stuff on here, and now it's decorated with a nice cloth on top and all sorts of things like that. So I can't ever put mics inside the top of the piano. So I decided I would come up with an unconventional method and mic it underneath. And it's taken me ages to get a nice sound that I'm really, really happy with. So that's kind of what I've done here. So that's the compressor part. I won't talk much about that because I didn't make any de uh, definitive changes to it. So we'll move on to the next plugin. And you'll hear a lot of keyboard. In, in some people's videos, you hear a lot of mouse clicks. In this one, you'll hear keyboard clicks. And that was loud on purpose. All right. So I now have a limiter in the next slot and that just it tamps it down, but it's, it keeps it nice without going overboard. And once again, I'll play a little passage, and I'll solo it. And I bounce out a solo, and then I'll bypass the limiter and solo it again. I'm shouting at the bottom mic so I don't have to uh, unbypass rather. All right, so that's that one. And I've used the, the logic preset called classical here. For classical music is the name of the preset. Very simple, very effective though. Um, I didn't have to tweak anything here as far as I can remember. And yeah, some of you will be calling me super lazy. But you know why I always say, if a preset works, use it. If you, I, I tend to base off of a preset and then change things if things need changing. Sometimes they just don't need changing and I get lucky. It's not always the way, but sometimes it's the way. All right, next plugin. This is just a Chromoverb and it's Concert Hall. And this one is going to be very easy to demonstrate. I will just solo again and I will bounce in and out of bypass and I'll play short notes this time and you'll hear the difference. So that's how I've done there. I've, I've made no changes to it, I don't believe. Um, I'll have a quick look, because if I did, it would just be a wet, dry mix. 
I've switched to the controls view now, so the dry is 100% and the wet is 15%, so very, very low. It's not supposed to take over the entire sound, it's just supposed to bring a little bit of uh, movement and splosh to the outcome. It's all right, really. It's very simple. This is Logic's Chromoverb, and it's, it's a nice plugin. It's stock and um, means that these templates load up very, very, very fast, and I like that fact. Next plugin. All right, what have we got here? This is something I have changed quite a bit. Now, I don't know if I can remember exactly what I've changed. This is the channel EQ in Logic, and I've got a preset called ONJ's Piano. Uh, ONJ, sure for Andre, if you're asking why. Well, that's a whole other story. So let me do the usual trick of bouncing in and out of bypass uh, with the piano soloed, and we can have a listen. All right, solo and normal. and unsoloed and unbypassed and now soloed again. And this time I'll play a little differently so you can get a sort of feel from staccato notes and see how that sounds to you. So it's kind of like a less boxy sound, I think. Um, I think I've really tuned this quite well. Um, you can tell me in the comments if you believe I have or haven't. I'd be very curious to know. Um, I spent a long time on it. And honestly, when I play it and I listen back, I'm really happy with the sound. It could well be, for example, that the compressor or limiter clamps down a little bit too much, or that the EQ is a little bit too boxy or not bassy enough. Um, and the thing is, you know, it's, it's about bias at the end of the day. I'm biased that my sound is good, but you may not agree, which is absolutely fine. I don't expect you to agree necessarily, and I'd love to hear from, you know, real engineers. I consider myself primarily a MIDI, MIDI person, a MIDI guy. So, you know, miking up and recording a real piano for me, even though I've had this piano for seven years, I think now, and I've had these mics for the same amount of time, but I one day had an epiphany about how I could put these mics to good use and get this piano sound I wanted, has taken me a long time to come to. A long time. So, you know, I do come at this from bias. But I'd be definitely curious to hear from the, the, those of you who do this for a living. I don't. I just want to be able to play and record it. So let's um, go into the controls view for the EQ, because I think that's the one with the most amount of changes, and see if there's anything I can think that looks like it's been changed. Well, the low cut and low shelf have not, but there's a peak one which is 160 hertz, and the gain is minus 8 dB there. 21.0 for the Q factor. There's a peak two gain, uh, sorry, a peak two frequency, 338 hertz, and a minus 6.8 uh, gain there, and a seven uh, Q factor there. No peak three, and a peak four. I could have used peak three, but I guess I didn't. 5600 hertz for peak 4, uh, plus 5 dB gain, because I guess I was boosting some of the highs there, and 1.40 for the Q factor. I've got a high shelf frequency at 12,000 hertz too, 6 dB gain on the high shelf, and 1.10 for the Q factor, and no high cut. So yeah, I think those would be the things that I'd be likely to have changed. Um, yeah, and I save that as a preset, and every time I tweak it, I modify and then resave this as a preset. So we've heard this like it is now with the effects on it and each one bypassed individually. Now I'm going to solo the piano again and play for you. Uh, everything should be in place normally. 
and then I'm going to bypass all the effects globally and you'll hear the piano drop drastically in sound quality or not really sound quality but sound level I should say um, and play for you without any effects on it at all so I'll solo this piano and now I'm talking to you under the piano so I will play Right, so by doing that, I tried to cover a lot of the range of the piano. I didn't go all the way too low or massively high, but I, I covered a lot of it. All right, now let's do the same thing, this time with all the effects bypassed like that. And back into solo we go. So there we have it. It's a mixture of this and a bit of that, and I really like it. So I'd be curious to know what you guys think. All right. I had another channel strip here, which was piano no effects, but I ended up not needing it. So I've deleted it now. All right. And now here's a me track. It's just called me. And if I solo the me track, you will only hear me coming through dry through this lav mic and I can play and it gets basically dropped out to nothing because it's picking up its, um, behavior from the piano track. So I can play. And it just drops right out. I've configured it as such. That's the least important part of this anyway, that I wasn't going to really show that off too hard, but it's just, you know, so I can do this video really. Yeah. So there we have it. Um, I don't know what else to say other than I hope you find this a little interesting. It's short, but sweet, maybe interesting. So I think I'll just play you out. I'll solo this, the, this channel strip here on the piano. Um, even though it gets ducked automatically, I just like knowing that it will be fine. And I wish you all a wonderful Christmas and a Happy New Year, or whatever holiday that you wish to celebrate, as it may be. And uh, if you're watching this at a different time of year, well, there's always some kind of holidays in this. So whether it's a bank holiday or Easter or who knows what it is, Halloween, some kind of potato farming festival, whatever it is, enjoy it. I'll play you out. Bye, and thanks for listening slash watching.